I heard you liked factories, so I made you a factory inside a factory which inherits from an abstract factory so it can create new factories. But enough about programming in Java. <laughs> you know, I mean, I at Netflix on the Originals team, okay, so, so in 2017 when Originals were really getting started, uh, real talk, we did have an abstract... We, we had an abstract builder factory, okay? It was an abstract builder factories that would produce images and other assets for all of our new original content. So, I mean, I, I did have, I did get the full abstract builder factory, right? Like, I think that's really a winner. And I, if I'm not mistaken, we also had an abstract factory. We also had the abstract factory factory. We had, we had like, we had it all. We had the builder config factory for sure. That you'd build up a config and then you'd produce it and it was super complicated and i got most of it down but man those days in java you know java java's a lot of lot of lot lot of factories you know what i mean you just get fucked up right it's just like if you ever want a good factory factory go get it in this video, we will learn about eight design patterns every developer should. Strategy is the only one. The strategy pattern, strategy pattern is like the greatest pattern of all time, okay? So everyone uses the strategy pattern. Uh, second off, iterator pattern, real good. No. In 1994, the Gang of Four released the Holy Book design patterns, introducing 23 object. By the way, if you haven't read this, you should. Even if you don't like OOP, this, this idea of patterns that can exist within software is really amazing. And it also works in things like Rust. There is patterns in Rust. Being able to understand patterns and like abstract them out and reuse a strategy to write software, I think is one of the best things you can do because no matter what software you write, there are patterns that can make things simpler and make other people get up to speed. Oriented design patterns falling into one of three buckets creational patterns, structural patterns, and behavioral patterns. While some argue that it's so dated, the fact that a 30 year old book is still being discussed definitely means something, especially yeah. in a world where JavaScript <laughs> frameworks are going out of style. Let's just, let's just be real here. If only. If only React was dying. Okay, anyways. Style faster than you can say JavaScript was a mistake. Anyways, let's start with our first creational pattern, the factory. Imagine that you want a burger, but you don't want to have to worry about getting all the ingredients and putting them together. You know, this is always how this, this pattern is des described. I always feel like it starts, it's verbally so simple, but it's always a huge pain in the ass. Anyways. So instead you just order a burger. Well, we can do the same thing with code. If it takes a list of ingredients to create a burger, we can instead use a factory which will instantiate the burger for us and return it to us whether it's a cheeseburger, a deluxe cheeseburger, or even a vegan burger. All we have to do is tell the factory what kind of burger we want, just like you would do at a restaurant. But be careful because this way you'll never- Again, you know, this always is the, I mean, like when you look at this for a second, you realize like how annoyingly coupled this is. You know what I mean? Like your method names, like you have to say the thing you want as the method name, but it uses the strategy pattern at the end. The strategy pattern's good. Like notice the strategy pattern at the end, they all have the word print. Yeah, this example makes no sense. I, I agree with that. But the, the print thing at the end, it, it, this uh, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, why not use an enum? I, I don't think this language... Uh, I mean, at this point, you should probably compose a burger of its various toppings. Because you should be able to push a topping and make your own. Then you can have named ones, right? You should just have named ones. Not You don't have to create new instances. They should just be named uh, hard-coded ones. And then you can have your build-your-own one, right? Well, let's, let's be real here. Okay. Uh, anyways. For know what's inside the special sauce. We have the secret ingredient. It's semen. Now, alternatively, if you Classic want a little more semen. control over how the sausage is made, you can go with the builder pattern. Classic the idea semen. is that if we want to make a burger, we don't immediately have to pass in all the parameters. We can use a burger builder instead. We'll have an in- By the way, this is the, the better way to do things. Uh, sort of. I, uh, this whole, 
it is better. It is in generally you should always use a builder pattern. Rust has a builder pattern. Uh, this is this is a real this is a real this is a real good. This is always usually much better. This whole like not returning yourself though. This is kind of freaking me out. Like you should return yourself. Return yourself. Individual method for adding each ingredient, whether it's a bun, patty, or cheese, each one will return a reference to the builder. Yep. And finally, we'll have a build method, which will return the final product. Then yep. we can instantiate a burger builder, add the buns that we want, the patty that we I want, like and the cheese that we want. End. And we can change- What is this, Bash? What are we writing Bash right now? Chain these methods because remember, each one will return a reference to it the is. builder. Finally, we Chaining can build it and we have the exact burger that we want. I've used this pattern a lot at Google with protocol buffers. Next, we have the singleton pattern. And I'm not talking. I did, you know, he just lightly threw out uh, using these with proto buffs. Like, that is a really great thing. Proto buffs are amazing. And this is one of the reasons why they're so good. When I'm at Google, I know just tosses out, casually tosses out Google and protobufs. It's a, neat code's absolutely right. Like when you use, when you use proper builder patterns, which is just like something you see all the time. So this is like a good thing you can actually take away. I like use this, honestly, use this today. Says the Netflix guy. You know, when I'm, when I'm designing my software at Netflix, I tend to use the builder pattern as well. You know what I mean? It's like, this is actually a really good, this is a very useful idea in general, and it, and it works in a lot of languages. It's mwah, right. It's it's just good times. Use this pattern a lot at Google with protocol buffers. Next, we have the singleton pattern, and I'm not talking about. They actually renamed the singleton pattern, of course, to the arch user pattern. I mean, you should probably you should probably keep up with the times, you know my dating life a singleton is just a class that can only have a single instance of it that's instantiated it has many use cases for example maintaining a single copy of our application state we would start by having a static instance variable let's say in our app we want to know if a user is logged in or not but we won't i i know that python is considered like the worst language to do classes in just just be okay with it right we're we're, we're looking for the pattern Right, that's one cool thing that should make the pattern even cooler in the sense that uh, the pattern can exist in such a way that it can work in multiple different languages. Right, that's good. That's a good thing because that's something that means that you can take it with you. Uh, the singleton pattern sucks until it's really awesome. Right, you know, I always come up with a stupid like database connection pool thing. Sometimes you want it as a singleton, but then you're like, well, do you really want it as a singleton? Shouldn't your program just hold on to it? By the way, low-level learning, we did react to yours. You, you, yours was great, your Zig one. I, I, you know, you always get into this one, you know. Don't use the constructor Logger. to actually instantiate yeah. the application state. We'll use a static method called get app. Hey, uh, low-level learning, can I do one more react to one more of your contents? Can you pick your favorite one and send it to me? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do one more after this, okay state which will first check if there's already an existing instance of can we pause it for a second uh i hate decorators for application state if not we'll instantiate one if there already is though we'll just return the existing instance we'll never create more than one so now if we get our app state for the first time the logged in value will initially be false but if we i mean to be fair i did use a singleton pattern for this when i was writing the video driver uh and the audio driver the thing was is that i also wrote the driver in such a way that behind the singleton was a uh, strategy pattern so it'd create a singleton strategy pattern so that way i could write a sync player something that doesn't actually go to anything it just is like a software sync it just swallows all the video and audio so that way i could do like high performance testing right i could play two hours of video in five seconds or I had it really actually go out to the actual television. And so there is places where the singleton makes a lot of sense, and especially if you can mix in like a singleton with a strategy, you can create ways to create your whole system such that it makes a lot of sense. So just saying, you know, I know the, the singleton gets a lot of uh, riffraff, but there are a few places where it's, it's super useful. For me, that was super useful. If we get the app state again this will actually still be the first instance so if we modify the first instance and then print the logged in value for both of them they will both now be true this pattern can be useful so that multiple components in your app will have also this example is terrifying i hate the idea you know modifying a static uh, a singleton you know it just terrifies me <laughs> you know like this right here this thing terrifies me <laughs> I know it's not, dude. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, they're just so hard to test. They are so hard to test. I'm totally on your team with that. Shared mutable state. It's shared mutable state is the 
the bane of all programming and the key to super awesome, amazing performance. And it's the scariest thing in the universe. And so careful. Have a shared source of truth. But how can all the components listen for updates in real time? Well, that's where the observer comes in, our first behavioral pattern. I prefer to call it the pub sub pattern. It's widely used beyond just object oriented programming, including in distributed yeah. systems. Let's take YouTube for example. This Every time I upload a video, all of my subscribers get a notification, including you, because Ooh, you're hey. subscribed, right? But right? in this case, the YouTube channel is the subject, aka publisher, which will be the source of events such as a new video being uploaded. We might want multiple observers, aka subscribers, to all be notified when these events happen in real time. One way to implement this pattern is to have a YouTube channel class which maintains a list of its subscribers. When a new user subscribes, we add them to the list of subscribers. When an event occurs, we go through that list of subscribers and send the event data to each of them this with a good. notification. But we also have to define the subscriber interface, which you can do with an abstract class or an interface. Interface. Different subscribers might implement this interface differently, but for a YouTube user, let's say that we just want to print the notification that was received. So then we can create a YouTube channel, add a few subscribers, and we only have to call notify once and all of the subscribers will receive the notification. This is also- This is good. I mean, I mean, it, uh, observer pattern, it's, it's real time. Uh, we use this a bunch. I, you know, again, the Python, I think there's like an instant distaste for- for this the idea of message passing i know oh my goodness don't shut up tj tj next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start talking about objective c so extensible enough that a subscriber could be subscribed to multiple channels an iterator is a pretty simple pattern that Iterator's defines great. how the values in an object can be iterated through in python just defining an array and then iterating through Iterator's it with great. the in keyword uses the built-in list iterator this way we don't even have to index the array now for more complex objects Iterators was good. In fact, it, you should know an iterator pattern. Uh, one of my first interviews with Google like 10 years ago when I had to fill it out on Google Docs, I actually did the Google interview at my job when I was writing C for the government for robots. And at Google, by the way, I got rejected, by the way. They didn't like me, by the way. But part of that interview was to write an iterator, right? And, and so and so knowing iterators, iterators are super useful. They're, they're, it's, a, it's a great pattern. And I've used iterators as ways to solve problems at Netflix, by the way. By the way, I use I, I work at Netflix, by the way. Uh, and so it's like, it's really, really good. Yeah, yeah, Netflix uh, or Google did reject me twice and then they offered me a, a uh, salary lower than the one I have at Netflix and tried to convince me that it's a starting point. And I said, of course it's a starting point. Any point you give me is a starting point. What you're saying is an objective truth for an objectively bad offer. So try again like binary search trees or linked lists, we can define our own. We can take a list node, which just has a value and a next pointer, and then a linked list, which has a head pointer and a current pointer. We can first define the... Weird passing in head as the first node. Uh, you know, just saying. Aren't you the guy that uh, built the autoplay sound on the homepage? I am. <laughs> iterator with the iter function, which will just set the current pointer to the head and then return a reference to the linked list. To get the next value like in it. the sequence, we define the next function. If our current pointer is non-null, we can get the value and then return it and also shift the current pointer. But if we reach the end of the linked list, we can send a signal that oh, we're yeah. going to stop iterating. To test it out, we can just initialize that's weird. Oh, yeah, because they don't have options, do they? Oh, yeah. So Rust solves this differently. You know, I don't, I mean, this just seems like why do you, why you have to throw an error to stop iterating? Just, I mean, it seems weird, right? Can we agree that it's, it's, just, a little, it's just a little weird? You know, it's just a little weird. I'm just saying it's a little weird, okay? Stop iterating is uh, crucial in Python. Yeah, I know, but it's still, it's weird. How do I get into Netflix as a, as a software intern? Um, be amazing list and iterate through it with the in keyword this is a much more simple interface than having to actually update pointers ourselves I agree. now if you want iterate. to modify mm. or extend ah. the behavior ah. of a class without directly changing it you can go with the strategy pattern for example we can strategy pattern always just always use the strategy pattern okay just just everything's a strategy pattern that's all strategy pattern is just fancy talk for use an interface you dummy
can filter an array by removing positive values or we could filter it by removing all odd values. These are two strategies, but maybe in the future we want to add more. And we want to follow the open-closed principle. Well, we can define a filter strategy, create an implementation which will remove all negative values, and an implementation which will remove all odd values, and then at runtime we can pass this strategy into our values object, and to test it out all we have to do is pass in the strategy into our filter method and we'll get our desired result this way we i use this exact like i literally use this exact same thing so i had to create uh so at netflix i'm doing this whole like performance audio video thing that i've been kind of talking about and when i'm building up some of the data stuff uh there's some values that as i build it up row by row i need to use the previous value uh but there's other that i need to only use the values that happened within that specific time span and so what I did is I created an emitter, right? So I have a continuous emitter, one that always emits the previous value. And then I have a counter emitter so that as time passes, I only emit at that point what I saw at Netflix, of course. By the way, I work at Netflix. I don't know if you know that. You can add additional so, like, this strategies is great. This without is great. modifying. You don't, even have to, you don't even have to like OOP to love strategy pattern. Strategy pattern is just, it's just make the thing into an interface and do the logic below the interface. Program at an interface level. That's all strategy pattern is. Program at an interface level. Oh, Netflix, you must get a free subscription. Shut up! <laughs> We don't talk about our free values subscriptions. Class. Next, we have the adapter, our first structural adapter pattern, what I like to call the lose your hair slowly pattern. pattern. It's analogous to the real world where we have a screw that's too small to fit into a hole. So <laughs> we've all we've all felt this problem, okay? You know, a lot of a lot of us, you know, we're just trying to uh you know, we're just trying to live our life. You know, it's not my fault. So instead, we use an adapter, which makes the screw compatible with the hole. Or maybe an example. <laughs> he just passed out the, the sexy sax man at the end. Okay. Well, I'm happy that, uh, well, I'm glad, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy that he leaned into that one. That was good. No one can be upset about that. Oh, that's a lot of water. No wonder I keep peeing. I know, I can't believe that. Can't believe there'd be a sexy time joke here that you're more familiar with we have a usb cable and a usb port we can plug in the usb cable which will directly fit into the port but instead if we have a micro usb cable it's not com again okay just because compatible so instead we need a micro to usb adapter which extends from the usb class but is composed of a micro usb cable which will be plugged into the adapter we can override the plug usb method from our parent class if needed but it's not in this case and then we can plug our micro usb cable into the adapter and then plug it into the port and it works just like a regular this is pretty much this is just pretty much the strategy pattern again right adapter pattern is just the application of a strategy pattern thought is is that yeah regular usb cable and our last pattern is the facade according to the dictionary so facade pattern um the facade pattern is actually okay so remember that whole like types definition argument that we went over the whole return types and all that in theo's vid video one of the reasons why i love return types is that you can actually facade it and this is really important it's not facade it's not facade, or however you're saying it's it's facade. Uh, and so I actually like the facade pattern. Facade facade is just encapsulation. Facade is just like a fancy ass word for simple simple shit, right? It's interface. Again, it always just comes down to interfaces. This is just fa facade these nuts. <laughs> it's just simply make an interface, and not all interfaces need to be equal. Okay. A facade is an outward appearance that is maintained to conceal a less pleasant or credible reality. In the programming world, the outward appearance is the class or interface we interact with as programmers, and the less pleasant reality is hopefully the complexity that is hidden from us. So a facade is simply a wrapper class that can be used to abstract lower level details that we don't want to have to worry about. I'm surprised yeah. it even qualifies as a design pattern, but some common examples might include HTTP clients, that abstract yep. away low level network this is perfect this is a perfect example I, you know that like again i the problem about the facade pattern is it's not necessarily a pattern as much as it is 
just good programming technique. Because because the thing is is that you can't really the, the thing about like the the strategy pattern is that there's like there's a there is an inherent thing you can apply it to. You can inherently apply the observer pattern. You can inherently apply the singleton pattern. This one you can't just apply because there's no actual application. It's just like you take a bunch of stuff and you make it into a method for doing a thing. Everything's a facade. <laughs> Everything's a facade. Exactly. Uh, and so that's like part of the the problem with this pattern is that there's no concrete application of it. You don't know. A good programmer uses it. A bad programmer uses it. A good programmer just uses it better than a bad programmer uses it. Uh, a facade pattern doesn't even have to be an extension of OO. Uh, oh, oh, it's just an extension of good programming. You can take any anything that you can hide information and you can have private implementation, implementation details and external ways to call it. A server, you can imagine a server is still is a facade. A CRUD application is a facade. You don't have to know the squeal uh, query to go do whatever you're doing. You're just calling a simple endpoint. It's just a it's just an abstraction that makes something simpler, quote unquote simpler. But the problem is, is once you add enough abstractions, you actually remake it complicated again. Facade patterns, both the best thing in the universe and the literal worst thing in the universe. Details or even arrays. Yes, a dynamic array like vectors in C++ or array lists in Java are constantly being resized under the hood. Thankfully, as programmers, we rarely have to think about memory allocation, though. If you're interested to learn more, check out my newly released object-oriented design interview course. We talk. This is great. This was fantastic. Check out his object-oriented design interview course. Uh, actually, it's probably not a bad idea. Everyone should learn how to think in object-oriented programming for a moment just to see how some people structurally set it up. And it can also make things drawing on a whiteboard really clear. And so often this is just how we naturally think, uh, despite it actually being what is good to program. You know how funny it is? It's, it's funny how that can it's funny how that can be is that a way we think is not necessarily like the naturally best way. Thoughts on functional options. I think function, uh, you know, there's some things about functionalism. That's great. Uh, Prime Jet, dang, I missed it. Uh, will this be on YouTube? Yeah, this is great. Uh, go check out Neat Code. I thought this was great. He did a great job. Went right over everything. Fantastic. Great video. Really appreciated this one. Uh, uh, by the way, I work at Netflix. If you don't know that, 